Islam is a religion of redemption, a religion of second chances, a religion where the door of Tawbah and the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always open for a person until they reach death or until the sun rises from the west, which is a major sign from the day of judgment. So what we've got to remember is, even if these first few days of Ramadan, you haven't made the most of them, and the previous Ramadans that you've witnessed, you haven't made the most of them, and you may be involved in certain bad habits or sin that you want to get rid of in your life, always remember that it's never too late to pick yourself up and to rectify and to redeem yourself. And this is a theme throughout the Quran and throughout the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find in various verses of the Quran, Allah jalla wa ala makes mention of his punishment for certain groups of people, at times even the worst of the worst. And thereafter, he calls them to make tawbah, he calls them to repent, and he calls them to turn to Allah. And he promises to forgive their sins and he promises that the ones who do good deeds, their good deeds wipe away the bad deeds. So as you're going through this month of Ramadan and for your future life, for however long you meant to live, always remember this, that Islam is a religion of redemption, a religion of second chances, no matter what you've done. And insan, the human being by nature, is one who falters and one who falls into sin. So what's his job? Obviously, we try our best to stay away from these sins. But if a person makes a mistake, he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him, the father of humankind. Allah honored him by putting him into Jannah. Allah honored him by teaching him all the names that the angels didn't even know. Allah honored him by ordering the angels to prostrate to this human being. Allah honored him by allowing him to benefit and to make the most of every single thing that was in Jannah. He was only told to stay away from one thing, which was a certain tree. And what does Adam alayhi salam do? Eventually, after some time, after the whispering of shaitan, he eventually eats from the tree that he was ordered not to eat from. Look at how Allah honored him in so many ways. And in fact, Allah told him and gave him the instruction to say, as for this tree, don't go close to it. Imagine today, if somebody honors you, somebody does good to you, and when it comes to certain dangers in your life, they warn you to say, you know what, be careful of that. There's a difference as to the one who doesn't know about the danger and falls into it. Adam alayhi salam was warned about the tree, not to come close. Yet he still goes and eats from the tree. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him to repent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches him how to repent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his repentance. What was the difference between him and Iblis? His sin was, he was arrogant and he told Allah that I am better than Adam and he didn't turn back. He didn't repent. He was not remorseful or regretful for whatever he did. He carried on in his bad and evil ways. As for Adam alayhi salam, he made the mistake even though he was warned and then he turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he asks for his forgiveness. This is a month of forgiveness, a month of rahmah, a month of mercy. Whatever you've done before in your life, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his door is open for you. The door of repentance is open for you. So make the most of it. And this is not only when it comes to Adam alayhi salam. There were other anbiya, their people made mistakes. However, when they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah forgives them. Look at Yunus alayhi salam. He was informed that his people would be destroyed. So he left a little bit early. He was worried about the punishment befalling them. So he left his community before the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had come to him. And what happens to his community? They were destined for destruction. Yet the Nabi left early. They returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They saw the punishment. They repented and Allah forgives them. 
That's why Allah speaks about them. فَلَوْلَا كَانَتْ قَرْيَةٌ آمَنَتْ فَنَفَعَهَا إِيمَانُهَا إِلَّا قَوْمَ يُونُسِ He's speaking about the people of Yunus alayhi salam. What did they do? لَمَّا آمَنُوا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُمْ عَذَابَ الْخِزْيِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا when they saw the punishment, they believed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the punishment and the affliction that they were about to witness or that was destined for them. Look at Musa alayhi salam before he became a Nabi. By mistake, he hit somebody and this person died. What does he do immediately? He turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Qala Rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi fadhfirli lah. O oh my Lord, I've oppressed myself, I've wronged myself, I've harmed myself, I've disobeyed, so forgive me. And Allah says, we forgave Musa alayhi salam. And when you look through the Quran, you find that there are many different verses that give a lot of hope. However, one that stands out that the scholars mention as being the one that gives the most hope, Allah says, Tell my worshippers, those who have exceeded the limits, those who have oppressed themselves, those who have sinned, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Interestingly enough, before this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of man and how when he's in difficulty, he calls out to Allah. Then when this difficulty is removed, he forgets Allah. And even though man, this is his nature, immediately after that Allah says that the door of mercy and the door of repentance is open. He says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya'qub alayhi salam. What does he tell his children when Yusuf alayhi salam is missing? As well as his brother Binyamin, as well as the other brother who refused to come back home, he tells his children, لا تيأسوا من روح الله. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always be optimistic. Be somebody who has hope. In the verse wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the most hope, he says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Allah forgives all sins. So look at how he's first telling you that the door of mercy is open. At times a person may feel that my sin is too big, it's too major. I've committed the sin, I carry on repeating the sin. Allah says, Allah will forgive all sins. At times a person may have one or two sins that they know are terrible. Allah is telling you that he forgives all sins. There's no exception if a person makes tawbah. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. He is the most forgiving, he forgives sin, he covers sin, and he is the most merciful. And in the verse after that, he encourages you to turn back to him. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ Turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And submit yourself before a punishment befalls you. So as these few days of Ramadan are remaining, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely and ask him to forgive your sins. And later on in the future, if you had to fall into the same sin, don't be the one who shaitan makes him feel so guilty that he forgets about tawbah. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sin. So that's point number one I'd like to mention. Point number two is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his names is Ash-Shakur. Ash-Shakur is the one who he gives great reward even if the deed seems little. Even if you've carried out a very small deed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his kindness, he multiplies the good deed and he gives more than the person deserves. When speaking about charity, Allah jalla wa ala tells you that the example of the one who gives charity is like a grain and this grain is planted and it grows and gives out seven ears of grain. Each ear contains 100 grains. Take a moment to ponder over this example mentioned in the Quran. He's telling you that the earth, which is nature, which is created by Allah, a creature of Allah, if you give it one grain, it gives you back 700. And this is the creation of Allah. Look at how, obviously it's inanimate, but look at how kind it is. Look at how much goodness you are reaping. You give it one, it gives you 700 and more. Allah Jalla wa ala tells you after that, that he multiplies more than 700 for whomsoever he wishes. What was this? A grain, i.e. equivalent to a very small deed, a small act of worship. So be that person during this month of Ramadan who has a lot of acts of worship and don't look down upon any good deed. You may have a few minutes before Salah when you come to the Masjid by opening the Quran, 
and reading, just even if it's a few lines or a page or two, don't underestimate the amount of reward you can attain and pay that with sincerity and this reward bi'ithnillah will be multiplied. This reward bi'ithnillah will be multiplied. Imagine every single letter has a reward and this reward can be multiplied by 10 and more for whomsoever Allah wishes. So don't look down upon this and don't forget that you are in a season of goodness. You know, when it comes to a worldly example, we understand when you've got a special or a discount or a sale, what do people do? Even if they unwell and even if they may be busy, they make time. Why? Because they know that it's a season of goodness. The amount of effort we put now or the amount of money we spend now, we are able to reap much more than what we would in normal circumstances. So what about the season of goodness when it comes to Ramadan? What about other seasons of goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? Also, when you look through the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you find this theme is constant where sincerity paid with a good deed. Even if it's a small good deed, the reward is great. A person who moved a branch, an obstacle from the road, what was his intention? His intention was so nobody else can be harmed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him. A woman who feeds a dog, even though the woman is a sinner, but she thinks to herself that if I'm so thirsty, this dog, this animal, is probably going through even much more difficulty. Let me give it some water and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives her. What's this? A small good deed paid with sincerity and the reward is multiplied. At times you find people do large good deeds, what apparently seems major. However, because the heart is not clean, the reward is either diminished or is cancelled altogether. So you find somebody who wants to do, for example, charity or give, but the intention in the heart is so everyone can praise me. Somebody wants to read so much Quran, but the intention in the heart is so everybody can call me a good hafiz or somebody who finishes the Quran constantly. What's that? It seems like a major good deed apparently, but because of what's in the heart, the reward is either minimized or cancelled altogether. In this month of Ramadan, it's only a few days long and a few days which are left. Don't neglect your compulsory salawat. What's compulsory upon you should always be in order. In Ramadan and out of Ramadan, but more so in the month of Ramadan because it's a season of goodness. Bi'ithnillah, your reward will be multiplied for those who need to give zakah. Remember, the word zakah, its meaning goes back to the word which is zakka, which is to purify and also to grow. So when you are taking out your zakah, your compulsory charity, remember that you are doing a good deed, you are fulfilling a pillar of Islam, bi'ithnillah, your wealth is being purified and it's a reason for your wealth to grow bi'ithnillah. And this growth could be either metaphorically where Allah puts barakah in your wealth it could be something which is tangible where you see that you actually get more money and it could be a combination of both and the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast and for those who may be unable to give zakah or zakah is not compulsory upon you you can give charity to anybody it may be small the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says protect yourselves from the hellfire even if it may be by giving half a date in sadaqah you know he says if you had to give half of that in sadaqah, it's a good deed. And bi'ithnillah, as we mentioned, with the correct intention, it's multiplied. And bi'ithnillah, it may be a reason for you being saved from the fire and entered into Jannah. That's why we know that from the small surahs, the short surahs that people usually read in their salah, one of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you about the amount of good and the amount of bad. He says, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ Whoever does a small amount of good, ذَرَّةٍ we generally translate as an atom's weight or something very small, like a small particle or small ant. Allah is telling you that whoever does small, such a small good deed equivalent to that much, he will still see it on the Day of Judgment. مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ And whoever does its equivalent in evil will also see it. As you've got these few days left, don't forget your compulsory acts of worship, salah, zakah, obviously you are fasting, and don't forget that there are certain voluntary acts of worship as we've mentioned before and we'll mention again. The best nights of the year are in the month of Ramadan. 
And to think of the year being 365 days long according to the solar calendar or roughly 360 days long. Imagine, every year you only get roughly 9 or 10 nights according to the sighting of the moon. Only 9 or 10 nights which are the best nights of the year. So surely as a Muslim who's thought about it and who knows that the life and the time is ticking on, try your best. If you haven't managed in the previous Ramadans, try in this Ramadan. These 10 nights will be specially for my ibadah and building my akhirah, building my jannah, bi'ithnillah. Because again, as we mentioned, it's a season of goodness and during these nights is Laylatul Qadr. Allah says Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. This Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. Why are we mentioning it now? Because what generally happens is when the last 10 nights come, people think that, okay, I'll wait for the last 10 nights. And then you find that because they, they're not used to carrying out acts of worship, not used to Qiyam, not used to reading Quran, they're unable to exert themselves in those last 10 nights. Why? Because they've never done it before. So start from now and prepare for these days. You know, when it comes to any other sport or any other worldly affair or any business, you start off slowly before you actually peak. So similarly, this month of Ramadan, you've got the first 20 days, roughly 10 have already passed. So you've got another 10. Make the most of them now so that when the last 10 nights come, you are able to exert yourself. It's extremely important for every single one of us to constantly ask the question to ourselves, what have we prepared for the Akhirah? Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at what you've prepared for tomorrow, i.e. the day of judgment. It's an act of worship to sit and ponder and reflect over your life. What have I done? What have I not done? What do I need to do? What's compulsory upon me that I've missed out? What are some of the haram sins I've committed that I need to repent? Am I ready to meet Allah in the state I'm in or not? Are there any seasons of goodness that are coming that I can make the most of? Because I'm surely and most definitely going to turn or return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he says, well, tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. The saying of Umar radiallahu anhu is, hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Take account of yourselves before your account will be taken. Every single deed you did, good or bad, its account will be presented in front of you. Your limbs and your hands and your feet and every part of your body will bear witness for you or against you. The places of worship, if you carried out your worship in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bear witness for you. When you recite the Quran, this Quran will intercede for you. Your salah as well as any other good deed, bi'ithnillah, will all be written for you. And what will be written against you? Any sin you committed, any harm you afflicted others with, and whatever disobedience you may have been involved in. So as we mentioned at the very beginning, Islam is a religion of redemption. No matter what you've done and no matter what mistakes you've made, you can always pick yourself up and the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always open. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promised to the one who repents and turns to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. We ask him to make us from those who witness Laylatul Qadr and whose ibadah is accepted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free us from the hellfire and enter us into the highest parts of Jannah. Amen.